Stocks have moved slightly in the green as we near the close for the week. But this week's losses come as investors continue to react to the Federal Reserve's signal that it intends to keep interest rates higher for longer. Joining me now to discuss how he's managing the current environment is Ed Klisholt, chief U.S. strategist at Ned Davis Research. Uh, Ed, uh, always good to talk to you. I, I wonder your assessment, as we've seen this little bit of damage over the last several weeks, have we uh, done significant harm to the longer-term trend? How are you thinking about it? Yeah, at, at this point, the damage has not been significant enough to say that this is a, a major peak. You know, whenever the market pulls back, the short-term technicals are going to look a little bit messy, and that's where we are now. As of yesterday, only 15 percent of stocks are above their 10-day their moving averages. But if you look at percentage of stocks above their 200-day, so that's you know, a little bit longer term, we're down about 45 percent. Usually that needs to get into the low 30s before you'd say it's a bigger sign of trouble. So at this point, you know, we'd say it, it's part of a, a good, healthy correction after a very strong start to the year. As we move to a seasonally stronger uh, quarter uh, in the fourth quarter, uh, look for the market to uh, resume its uptrend. Are we in that mode, which often happens after you get uh, any kind of a pullback, where you're wanting to see the, the numbers get worse before they get better to give you some kind of a signal that it's overdone to the downside, or might we not need that? Yeah, it, at this point, I wouldn't say it's washout levels. Like, you'd want to see percentage of stocks of other 10 to moving averages get below 10 percent. Uh, we have a sentiment composite that combines a lot of sentiment indicators like the VIX index, put call ratios. That's down to a low neutral. We'd love to get that to show a lot of pessimism, a lot more concern in the market. That's the kind of washout levels we'd like to see. So, so perhaps there's some downside risk over the next few weeks uh, to get a few more people out of the market, uh, shake some of those uh, uncertainties certain bulls out before the, the market can uh, start that year-end rally. And how has this move higher in yields uh, and, I guess, increasing uh, expectations of how high the rates might remain into next year, how does that play into equity valuations or the ability of the market to absorb that? It has, even though you say, well, this has been, this was a really strong year. You know, the first seven months of the year were the best since 1997 for the S&P 500. But if you start back to the start of the bull market in the fourth quarter, this is actually the third weakest bull market for the first year post-World War II. And I think one of the reasons why is that if you can get 5.5% from cash, why put your money in stocks? The hurdle rate, you know, to get into the market is much higher, which is part of the reason why you probably you saw these AI stocks do so well. I say, okay, I'll put my, some money in cash and then put the rest in areas I think that can do a lot better than cash. So if a company maybe is improving its earnings growth from say three to seven percent, it may not be worth it in a world of five percent T-bill yields. Yeah, I guess that's true. If in fact the, you know the the relative weakness of this bull market since the low last October, if that can mostly be explained by you know investors preferring to to get five percent in cash, that's not such a bad economic message. I just wonder if you also look at things like smaller cap stocks breaking down uh, and, and you know just the average stock lagging so far behind the S and P five hundred. If those things are sending any kind of an economic warning signal on top of it. Well, yeah, there's a, there's a couple things here, Michael. One is that the bear market last year was not associated with a recession. And so the rebound from those from the high beta areas like small caps tends to only last about six months. And that's kind of what we got leading into the Silicon Valley crisis in, in March. Uh, in, but I would say that as the bull market matures, then small caps tend to weaken. And so what, what we're seeing right now from small caps, for example, is that their interest expense has soared as as rates have gone up and they're having to refinance their debts. That's also happened with large caps. But because large caps have more cash in their balance sheet, they're actually playing the yield curve. Some of them are making more money on their cash, their interest income, it is greater than their interest expense. And small caps just don't have that ability for the most part. And so this rising rate environment is playing into the challenge for small caps, which is why we think there's a there's economic risk as we head into next year uh, as the, the, the rates start to take hold. Those long and variable lags that the Fed likes to talk about you know, are still out there for 2024.